We're here today with Mark Thompson, Managing Director of Talga Resources. Mark, thanks for your time. Thanks, David. The company has big graphene goals. Why graphene and why is it important? Well, graphene is the world's strongest, uh, thinnest, most conductive material in, in most applications. So it can improve almost every part of the material world. So that's not just a big market, it's also a environmentally sustainable sort of market as well, or making a, a positive impact on these materials. So we see graphene as not only a, a growth, massive growth story in materials, but also actually improving um, a lot of the way these materials are, are made and transported and the environmental impacts of that material. You've recently achieved some startling results in regards to concrete. Uh, we, well, we have. Uh, we've um, added some of our graphene and, and a little bit of our graphite products too into concrete. We've made a prototype concrete which is 26% uh, stronger in flex, flexing strength, which is the ability of something to bend, um, which in concrete is obviously a big deal when it comes to building bridges and roads and things like that. Uh, we also improved the concrete by about 14% in strength. Um, so this, this work was done at an independent test lab in Germany and it's significant because it used really industry standard materials in that part of the world which consumes a, a lot of materials. Um, it's also really the first time we've attempted strength. It's not the, uh, yeah, this is the end of the journey and these are the best numbers we've got. We actually generated this material while working on our thermal concrete product that we mentioned uh, last month. So for us, it's actually a really startling good first result and we're going to optimise it and look for higher performance. So next steps and milestones? Yeah, we, we, first of all, we want to take this, these results allow us to take this concrete product out to, to industry and uh, work with partners to develop the, the product. Um, obviously, it can have a really big positive impact on our um, on the volume of material, I guess, that comes out of, of our operation. Um, so we'd like the heavy lifting to be done along with commercial partners. Um, and at the same time, our technical team will continue to try and refine this and optimise it to get even higher performance. And maybe that'll end up splitting off into its own, I guess, set of, a performance division on, on the concrete side, um, which is separate to the thermal conductivity. We're also going to do more test work on electrical conductivity. So this is to make solid state heatable um, underfloor heating products, um, roads that can be kept snow or ice free, um, things like that. So it's a mixture of the thermal and the electrical conductivity properties, combining with the strength that will probably give us a, a really special place in the concrete industry going forward. What do results like this potentially mean to the concrete industry? Stronger concrete is a it's a pre, it's a premium product, but it's got a big impact in the the concrete industry. It's using more and more of it because of urbanisation, frankly. So the global uh, rush to cities that's happening means more and more skyscrapers, more roads, more rail, more infrastructure, and it all uses more and more concrete. The volume of concrete is really big, and it's one of the world's largest CO two emitters. So there is actually a, a a drive in the industry to have less volume of concrete. In other words, if it's stronger you can have less volume or less concrete do the same job, or it will last longer, it won't wear out so fast. So there's actually a, a trend in the industry to seek that um, taking up less space, using less volume, and you do that by having stronger concrete. And that's what gives you the CO2 and the other benefits as well. So in that way, um, even small strength improvements, using materials like graphene, which is carbon, it's not a metal, it's not a, uh, and we're getting it from a natural source, so it actually makes for a uh, pretty compelling um, sustainability argument for the concrete uh, industry and that is a big driver along with our overall demand that is continuing to increase from this uh, urbanisation. And have the results grabbed attention? Uh, the, they have. Uh, there's some other companies that also sell nano additives, uh, types of carbon products added to concrete that have got uh, pretty significant uh, market valuations and they've already been educating the investors, I guess, somewhat as to the potential for stronger concrete, which means light, less concrete or lower volumes, lower CO2 emissions, things like that. So um, I think that message has already been out there and, and I see this as very complementary. You know, we're European based, we, we produce in, uh, well, future production will be uh, based in Sweden. Um, so, so we're more of a European story, but the investors are already open to what the potential is of having a special additive for the concrete market, which is a, a giant you know, eight to 20 billion tonne a year total market worth uh, 450 uh, billion a year ultimately. Um, so that's the sort of volume that we as a company and with our all body are sort of designed to take advantage of. In terms of next steps, in addition to this, what should investors be looking for? 
Oh, look, we're continuing to not only, we're, we're talking about some product development at the moment, uh, obviously, so we're, we'll always have product development news uh, where we have breakthroughs or, or developments with some of our key sectors. Um, we're also continuing our work in batteries. Uh, they should keep an eye out for our work in the plastics and composites like carbon fibre market as well. Um, we're, we're getting pretty busy on that side of things. And, uh, and the paints and coating side is going really well in combination with the, with the commercial side. So the big focus this year is now taking these products. Once they're at this level, they're actually at a stage where the companies will take, uh, take notice. So by showing them a product and the test results, it's very different to a raw material story. It's more of a vertically integrated product story. And that product uh, can have IP in it, background IP. And so when you present that to a company, it relates more in a, in a commercial, it accelerates your commercial process. So um, uh, that's the other thing that you should look out for is continued um, more commercial deals on our materials. Mark, thanks for your time. Pleasure, David. Thanks.